Well, good evening, Father's Heart. I'm so, so, so excited to be with you this evening. I trust that you are ready to get around God's Word. So let's just pray as we come together and come online. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you're going to move by your Spirit in our lives. Lord, that we are never going to be the same again. Lord, that we are going to encounter a major flow of your spirit and anointing. Lord, in everything that we do in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you, Lord, for the power of God to flow in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to welcome you as you come online. Father Zart, I want to just say it's absolutely awesome to have you together tonight. And as I said before, we are going to have a very, very important uh, topic tonight. So please, I want you to take notes. Please get hold of a pen and paper and get ready because I'm going to give you a lot of scripture, but it's going to be very important for you. You see me? Amen. All right. So just before we get going, I just want to remind you that if you do not have a local church and you're looking for a local church, please consider Father's Heart. Um, because it's important that we're part of a local church. All right, God's order is that we're part of a local church. You can go to fathersart.co.za and all our details are there. And if you'd like to become a member, there is an enrollment uh, button there. So please consider it so that you are in this order of God's blessing. Amen. All right, let's get right into our giving tonight. And I make no apology for teaching on giving. Because I believe that we need to believe God, trust God, because He's our source and He's our only source. And the problem is this, is we never get taught properly how to believe God. What do we expect from God? Where can our faith go so that we can see the blessing and the power of God in Jesus' name? Amen. Ephesians 4.19 says this, And my God shall supply all your needs, according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, God has so much wealth that your need is not a problem. Because He says that I, God, Jesus Christ, is going to supply, all right, God is going to supply all the need that you need according to His riches in glory, not according to what you've got or another human being. You see, people don't realize there's no limitation with God whatsoever. All right? Absolutely none. And so God will use whoever He uses on this earth. Now, He's going to use men and women to bring that supply to you. All right? It's not like it just falls out of the sky. But God will use the unsaved to come and help you, to feed you, to take care of you, whatever needs to happen. It doesn't matter who it is, but God will make sure that you are taken care of. Because, listen carefully, for my God shall supply all my needs. Now, when we speak about needs, what level is needs? All right, that's your basics, all right, your shelter, your clothing, your food. Those are the things that God will take care of from the onset. God is going to take care of those things. Now, how do I activate that? You see, the problem is most believers or most people don't really believe that God can do this. You know, we've got a concept that the, up in heaven is a God that's very wealthy and everything's looking great. But he's not actually that involved in my little life. All right, I'm literally like a little ant in his eyes compared to this, you know, even less than an ant, but compared to the universe. So why is he going to take all this effort and time with me? Well, firstly, I wanted to say he created you and he created you in his image. You're the only creation that has got that stamp of approval. And now he makes a promise and he says, listen, I'm going to look after this creation. As long as you put your trust in Him. And this is where a lot of things go pear-shaped and a lot of things have gone wrong. Is that a lot of Christians have not actually put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not actually believe that He can do this and they don't believe that He's actually going to do this. 
All right, that Jesus Christ has made a way, has made a way so that God will personally meet all of your needs. And so we've got to start by this. Number one, we have got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Because it's through Jesus Christ. All right, listen to this. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. It is through what Jesus Christ has done that we have access to this immense support. So, first thing, you have to get born again. You have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, you actually have to believe God. You actually have to trust God. If you do not believe God, it's not going to happen for you. Because remember this, we are human beings and God has given us the ability of choice. You have the freedom of choice. You can choose to believe God and His system, or you can choose to believe the world and its system. And so you've got to make a decision. You have to make a decision as to whether you're actually going to trust God and believe Him. Now, how do I get to the place of trusting God, to the place that I'll see this happening? It's where I honestly, we are honestly come before God and I start reading His Word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And as I believe God, I'm going to grow and I'm going to get stronger and I'm going to see God do something miraculous for me in Jesus' name. And so, this evening, as we come around our giving, let us trust God. Let us believe God. <clears throat> Excuse me, that He will supply all of your needs. I can vouch for that. Because the last time that I had a formal salary, all right, up until now recently, okay, I'm getting a salary now again, but for 15 years, I never had a salary at all. Because we learned how to believe God, how to trust God, and how to carry the scripture. And you know what? Not one day without a salary, Janine or myself, did we go hungry, that we lack because God supplied our needs in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Father, we come before you this, this evening. Lord, I thank you that you love us so much. And Lord, I thank you that we are going to trust you. Lord, that we're going to make you our source and our only source. Jesus, I thank you for opening the way for us. That we have access to this incredible resource. And support in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that we are not going to be the same again. And Lord, that we are going to do what you have called us to do. And we are going to see the victory. We are going to see the anointing. And we are going to see the power of God flow in our lives. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are going to supply each one of our needs as we put our trust in you. Father, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your anointing. Lord, that shifts and changes everything in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to bless you. I want to just say that if you are uh, making details on screen, remember this. As you give in obedience, all right, as you give your tithes and offerings, as you sow for the poor, I want you to know, give it in faith. Believing God that God is going to do something <coughs> supernatural in our nation. So let's believe God for the supernatural to take place in our nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want to remind you that if you are giving from outside of the country, please uh, go to fathersart.co.za and hit the donate button and it will help you uh, to give on the cheapest, easiest way possible. Amen. So God bless you. Have an awesome time in your giving. I want you to have an absolute experience. Every time you give, give it by faith. 
It's amazing. The more you give, the more your faith rises and more God supplies so that you can give more. Amen. All right. This evening, I want us to, um, to get into some worship. And I know that I've done it slightly in a different order, but that's okay. Um, because I wanted to just teach on that giving section. And I think it was quite important. But this evening I want to get into worship. And straight out of worship I'm going to get into the Word. So as we come into worship right now, I want you please, let's open our hearts. Let's receive what God has for us. Let's receive every single blessing that God has in store for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So let's just pray. Father, I just thank you that we're coming to worship right now. Lord, that we will open our hearts to receive from you. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome. Lord, come and touch us. Come and change us. Lord, come and bring us to the place of destiny and purpose. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Over to you, John.
the only solid ground the nations rise and fall the kingdoms once strong now shaken we trust forever in your name the name of jesus The name of Jesus You are the only King forever Almighty God we lift you higher You are the only King forever Forevermore You are victorious and you are the only King forever Almighty God we lift you higher You are the only King forever Forever In love and justice you will reign And every knee will bow We bring our expectations Our hope is anchored in your name The name of Jesus Oh, we trust the name touch of heaven come and just reach out and touch us tonight God every heart every life in this place how I live for the moments where I'm still in your presence all the noise dies down Lord speak to me now you have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord, I know my heart wants some more of you My heart wants something new So I surrender all And all I want is to live desire is to know you deeper, Lord, I will open up again, 
Throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. Whoa.
mighty name of Jesus that you'll minister to each one of us. Lord, I pray for a spirit of revelation and understanding to flow tonight. Lord, I thank you that as we delve into elements and aspects of the kingdom of God, I pray that we will get a revelation of what this is all about and what you have for us in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that we will not settle for second best, but Lord, that we will genuinely do and obey your word and really trust you for the supernatural move of your spirit in our lives. Lord, I thank you right now that we will get a revelation of your kingdom. Lord, that we will know what it means and know what is expected of us. But Lord, I thank you for the privilege of being part of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, so let's get into tonight's topic. Tonight I want to deal with the kingdom of God. And before I get into the actual topic, I want to say this. Jesus Christ spoke about the kingdom more than he did any other topic in the New Testament. But yet so few of us understand the kingdom, understand how the kingdom of God operates, and also what is expected from us in this kingdom. And so tonight I want to deal with the element of, of where is the kingdom? Where is God's kingdom? Okay, because people have looked at this thing, they're not sure where the kingdom of God is. Is it on earth? Is it in heaven? Where is the kingdom of God? So if we speak about the kingdom of God, in other words, where is the area that God reigns? Okay, so a kingdom is the domain or the area in which a king reigns. So if I to ask you today, where is the kingdom of God? Most people would just say it's all over the earth. I want to tell you that's incorrect. And you're going to go, what? Yes, it's incorrect. And I'm going to show you through scripture where it is and also how it operates. Now, we are going to teach many topics on different aspects, different elements of the kingdom. Okay, because this is a very, very vast topic. But... If Jesus taught so much on it, we need to understand that we are part of this. And we also need to understand our place in the kingdom, our function in the kingdom, and what does God expect from me? You know, what is God expecting us to do as part of saints, of being the saints and his children? So let's start by answering the first question. All right, where is the kingdom of God? I want us to go to Luke chapter 17. Verse 20 and 21 says this, And when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. So in other words, he's saying, listen, you cannot see my kingdom. Observation means I can see it. You cannot see my kingdom. In other words, if I now travel now to Israel and that, So if I go to Israel, I see very clearly that I'm moving into another kingdom. You know, we were baptizing on the Jordan uh, Jordan River. Now halfway through the Jordan, the Jordan is the the boundary between two nations, between uh, Israel and Jordan. Now if we are baptizing in the river, we go too far... The Jordians on the other side, you literally see almost a military base on the other side of the river. And it's not a wide river. And so you go past halfway, they're going to start shouting at you and start coming with military weapons. 
Because you can see the boundary. You can see the military no man land and you can see that this is the one country, this is the other country. But Jesus Christ makes a statement. He says, you cannot see my country. You will not be able to identify the borders. You will not be able to identify where my kingdom is when you look in the natural for something. Now this is very confusing because the Jewish people were looking for a natural kingdom, a natural leader. Like you have Israel right now, they're looking for Jesus to come and rule over their nation. Okay? So that's what they were expecting. Jesus makes a statement and he says, listen, you are not going to, uh, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. You can't see it. Verse 21. Nor will they say, see here or see there. In other words, nobody can say, this is the kingdom. Come look here. We're going to show you where it is. Here comes the important, important, important thing. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Now this is so, so critical. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Now if we say God rules over his kingdom, he's ruling over the people. <coughs> he's ruling over those that are part of the kingdom. So if you are part of the kingdom of God, God is ruling over you as an individual. And he's not ruling over a territory or an area. Okay, but now I want to show you something. People have been asking me, what is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Okay, it's really important that you understand this. Let's go to Psalm 103 verse 19. It says this, The Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom overrules, uh, rules over all. So now we've just realized the kingdom of God is inside of us. The kingdom of heaven is his rule, his, his physical throne. Okay? If you want to bring it to today's scenario, kingdom of heaven is like the parliament and the kingdom of God is the rest of the nation. Except God's nation is the rule comes from his throne, heaven. And that's all that heaven is. It's just where his throne is. That's where he's ruling from. Secondly, the kingdom is inside each individual. It is not a physical location. Wherever you move, you are bringing the kingdom with you. So if I went to Israel, I'm bringing the kingdom of God to Israel. So this is a very different concept and a very different idea. But I want you to see that God's throne is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is literally where he's ruling, but that is going to change. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 3, it says, ultimately, God is going to move his throne to the new Jerusalem. 22 verse 3, Revelation. There shall be no more curse. All right, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, the new Jerusalem, and his servants shall serve him. So, how does the kingdom then operate on this earth? It operates through you and I. Now, as we go and get somebody born again, we are extending the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, what about the natural thing? What about earth? All right? What about our businesses and everything else that's going on in the natural? I need you to understand the kingdom of God controls it through you. The natural is controlled through you operating and bringing the kingdom of God into the area. Now, if you do not do that, the kingdom of God will not be there. Now, this is why it is so important that we get this. All right, let's just take something practical. I've told you many times that demonic spirits are territorial. They are in areas. This is why we need to be in areas because wherever you are, you are bringing the kingdom of God into the area that you are located or where you find yourself at the time. It's like 
If we go and do a function or something in, in an area, like um, let's say we're going to Natal, we're going to do a function. When we go there, we have a meeting and everybody comes together. We are bringing the kingdom of God into that area. And so the kingdom of God is very mobile. It's very flexible. It can move. And so if you find an area where there is no strong Christian presence and people who understand the kingdom and release the power of the kingdom onto that area, there will be a very strong demonic influence in the stronghold. And this is one of the reasons why we are very strong in developing home fellowship groups, study groups all over the nation. Because every time a small fellowship group gets together, they are establishing the kingdom of God into this area. Into the area where they meet. Into the suburb where they are at. And every time I say to you, please go and control the atmosphere. Go and do what God has called you to do. You are bringing the kingdom of God into that area. So I need you to understand the starting point of the kingdom is that it is God's domain of reign and, and, and control, but it is inside of every believer, inside of you. The kingdom of God is not anywhere else. So this is very important. I cannot go and say, God, I give you my business. You be the CEO of the business. God's kingdom does not ever go into stuff or things. The effects of God's kingdom will affect everything. Okay? But God's kingdom is not in a business. You cannot say that God is the CEO of a business. No, you, you can't do that. Because God only works through people. And so therefore you need to say, I am the CEO of my business, if I'm a CEO. I am the CEO of my business. I submit to God, I bring the kingdom of God into this business and the results and the, the blessing brought by the kingdom will affect everything around. Now that is how the kingdom of God operates in this earth. And so if we get this and we understand this, it is going to change a lot of our thinking. It is going to change the way we operate. It's going to change the way we do things. And I want to tell you right now, you are going to be so blessed and so powerful if you understand the concept that I'm teaching you. This is why when we left Kenton and we didn't understand that we were controlling the environment or the atmosphere, when we left, we were taking the kingdom with us. It did not remain there. Somebody had to pick up the baton and continue the work that we had started there. And we did not understand it and it was a mistake that we made. We should have handed it over and said, you keep the spiritual atmosphere open. This is how you do it. This is, and this is what we are doing right now. We're going around the nation to help you get this right. This is why we travel so much. All right, so that we can go and equip you. So that you can bring the kingdom of God into your family. Bring the kingdom of God into your business. Bring the kingdom of God into your suburb. But I want to say this. If you leave the suburb, you are taking the kingdom of God with you. It is not remaining there. So somebody else has to then pick it up. This is why I am really strong on small fellowship groups right across the nation. I believe with all my heart for many reasons that if we do this correctly and we really do establish small fellowship groups across this nation, we will see a major revival start taking place. We will see the power of God start operating in our lives like never before. And so saints, I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us. Don't take these things lightly. Don't take these, these principles lightly that we are teaching you. All right, so when we speak about you coming into the kingdom, we are talking about the kingdom of God inside of you. So I want to now move over to some of the facts about the kingdom inside of me. Right? Let's just focus on that for a little bit. Now, 
Like I said, there are so many elements around this topic, it's going to take us quite a few months to cover everything. All right, and we'll continue doing it. We'll go through the, the parables of the kingdom and all of these things, because Jesus spoke so much about this. But the crux, the nutshell of it is this. The kingdom of God is within you, and are you releasing it or not? It's up to you. So let's have a look. Number one. I'm going to go through five points, which I consider the main points. Okay, there's lots of points, but five key things of the kingdom within me. Number one, you get entry into the kingdom through salvation. You cannot enter the kingdom of God if you are not born again. If you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, if you want to be part of the kingdom of God, and you want to have the kingdom of God operating inside of you, you have to get born again. Romans chapter 10 verse 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So your entry point, your citizenship, changes the minute you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, that we are not citizens of this world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. You are not a citizen of this world. You are now a citizen of a new kingdom. The kingdom of God. Controlled by Jesus Christ and God the Father. Who are at their thrones, where? In the kingdom of heaven right now. Which will have it in the new Jerusalem. Okay? Just need so you get the picture. Now, if I have the kingdom of God within me. I need to start operating on some things. Okay? But let's go through this. Number one, I need to understand if I want to be part of the kingdom, I've got to get born again. You've got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Number two, the kingdom is active right now. We do not need to wait for it. You see, Israel was waiting for a Messiah. They could not operate on the level that you and I can operate on right now. We are living in the most exciting time in history simply because the kingdom of God is operational right now. There's no promise. There's no waiting. There's no um, trusting God that someday God's going to come up and show up and do something. No. God has done everything that he's going to do for mankind. The, the kingdom of God is fully operational. Fully operational. You just have to tap into it. Let's take an example. Mark chapter 16. Verse 17 to 18. It says this. These signs will follow those who believe. In other words, you're born again. These signs are going to follow those that are born again. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Now, there are so many principles. I could not go and give you 5,000 principles. Okay? The Bible says nothing is impossible with God. If you have faith like a mustard seed, the mountain will be removed. Okay? Um, you can ask whatever you will in my name. If you don't doubt it, it will be given to you. I mean, I can give you scripture of the scripture of the scripture now of proof that the kingdom is now active. It is not something that we now need to wait for and believe God for. We just have to start doing what we need to do. So, I want to just say this. If the kingdom of God brings me, uh, if I get come into the kingdom of God simply because of salvation, does that mean somebody who's saved longer than me has more authority and power? No. The Bible says that the kingdom of God works irrespective of your spiritual level. The only thing God says is you've got to have faith. You've got to believe that God's word is true and you're actually going to do what he tells you to do. So, all of the focus now comes within me. Okay, I need you to understand this. Everything is now about me. The kingdom of God is literally determined by how much I am, as a Christian, 
going to start operating and functioning in this. And I want to say this. Very often churches have limited the kingdom of God from operating. Why? Because they say, sit here, do nothing, we will just teach you. And you just get fat and you don't actually do anything. I want to tell you, I know many, many Christians who just go to church just to get a good message, feel good, and go home and criticize the minister. All right, so I want to say this. That is not growing the kingdom and operating in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is meant to be practiced and meant to be experienced and meant to be um, extended wherever we go in Jesus' name. So, I want to say this. The kingdom of heaven, uh, sorry, the kingdom of God is active right now. We need to practice. Number three. The Holy Spirit has given us to lead us in this kingdom. In other words, we're now part of a kingdom. We're not 100% sure where to go now. How do I navigate myself in this kingdom? I mean, it's like I go to a country. I don't know if you've ever got lost in a foreign country. Man, I tell you what, it is scary. You get into a foreign country and every signboard is in another language. You don't have a clue where you are. People you ask don't understand. I mean, I was uh, on a trip once with one of my friends, and he literally had a GPS, and we figured out he was holding it upside down. All right? <laughs> because uh, the phone GPS, it was literally upside down because of the language thing. We didn't see it was the wrong way around. Now, I want to say this. When we come to the kingdom of God, we need to navigate ourselves through the principles. We need to navigate ourselves through what God wants for us. We need to navigate ourselves into how to apply what God has for us. Because remember, God's ruling, but He's ruling through the individuals only. You see, do you know that God does not put in the sky? I said to God one day, I said, God, why don't you do this? It's a lot easier. Put a 10 count down over a country. And say, in 10 seconds, I'm going to destroy this country with fire. <coughs> Excuse me, and start counting down. When that country disappears and is blown up or just gone, I promise you, you put that count down on another country, everybody will get saved. And God said to me very clearly, I'm not working through creation. Listen carefully. I'm working through the individual. I'm working through man. And wherever man goes, he takes the kingdom of God with him. So the Holy Spirit has given us to help us navigate. He's like our guide. Helps us get the truth. Because I want you to see John chapter 14 verse 17 says this. The Spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. Remember that, can only receive the Holy Spirit if you're born again. Because they neither see Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. For He dwells with you and He will be in you. Now this is so, so important. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. In John chapter 14, he says, listen, the Holy Spirit's going to come. I'm going, the Holy Spirit's coming, and he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you into all truth. So you know what the truth is and what to do. Okay? But I want to show you this. It says that he will be in you. He's not in you yet. After Jesus gets raised from the dead, he goes straight to his disciples and the first thing that Jesus does is he leads him to the Lord. He gets him born again. Why do I know that? John chapter 20 verse 22, it says this. And when Jesus Christ had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now in John 14, he said the Holy Spirit was with them, but the Holy Spirit was not in them. In John chapter 20, the Holy Spirit is now in them. Now, what does that mean? The kingdom of God is activated now. The kingdom of God got activated the day that Jesus got raised from the dead. Jesus prayed the price, sorted everything out, and he says, okay, now the kingdom of God is activated from this point. So we have the Holy Spirit that is leading us and guiding us. Giving us the direction in our lives. Showing us what principles we need to apply. Comfort us when we are troubled. I mean, we can go through a lot of functions of the Holy Spirit. Number four. The Bible gives us guidance on how this kingdom operates. 
It's like if it was a normal world situation, it would be like the Constitution. So I want you to think, Parliament, Kingdom of Heaven, with throne where Jesus is and the Father is. The Bible, the Constitution, gives us the rules. How does this operate? Which principles work? How does this work? All right? And the Bible is very clear on that. I want us to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. In other words, God wrote those scriptures, got the guys to write the words down. Okay? He worked through them, through God. It is profitable for doctrine. In other words, what I believe. Profitable for correction. Listen to this. For instruction in righteousness. In other words, you don't know what to do, so find out in the Bible. What does the Bible say? The Bible will give us the instruction so that we can go and do what God called us to do. And I think this is really, really, really important. This is so, so powerful that we understand this. Okay, number five. The Holy Spirit teaches us about God and lets us understand the truth. Okay? In John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15, it says, However, when He, the Holy Spirit, has come, He will guide you into all truth. In other words, you will know what the truth is on the Word. You will have an understanding of the Word. For He will not speak of His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak. In other words, what God the Father or Jesus Christ has said, He's going to speak. He will tell you the things to come. So the Holy Spirit's going to show us stuff that's going to come. He will glorify me. He will take what uh, of what is mine and declare it to you. He's going to say, listen, this is what Jesus Christ has to say. This is what Jesus Christ has. I'm declaring it to you. All things that the Father has, the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that He will take of mine and declare it to you. So Jesus is saying, whatever the Father's got is His. And whatever it He's God. The Holy Spirit will declare to us. Now I want to say this. We've got to get this. Get this picture. I have the, the kingdom of God inside of me. I don't know how to operate it properly. So I have two major things. Number one, I have the Holy Spirit leading me and guiding me. Showing me all truth. Teaching me the principles. Showing me how to do this. No, the Holy Spirit gives me the gifts. The Holy Spirit gives me the fruit. He gives me love. I mean, He does so many things for us. To help us activate the kingdom properly. Then I've got the Bible that gives me clear instructions. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. So that I know how the kingdom operates. If I'm not sure, I go to the constitution. I go to the highest set of rules in the kingdom. And the Bible says that the word of God will remain forever. So it's not something that's going to disappear. Even when we're in the new heaven and the new earth, the word of God is still going to be the guideline of everything. And so we need to submit to God's word and the Holy Spirit and understand that you are the kingdom of God. It is in you. You need to activate it. You need to release the word and it will change environments. You need to release the word. Okay? And things are going to happen. Now, I want to say this. And this is very important. Here's your highlight for the night. The kingdom of God is only activated through you. The kingdom of God is only activated through you. If you have a problem, you have to activate the kingdom into that problem. You cannot sit down and just go, oh, woe is me. No. How do I activate it? Number one, I get a scripture. God, here is a problem. What scripture can I use to counteract what I'm seeing in the natural? Holy Spirit, show me what I need to pray. As I pray, I'm releasing the word which releases angels. I'm releasing God into the situation. I'm calling him into the situation. And what am I actually doing? I'm bringing the kingdom of God into the natural. The kingdom of God does not just automatically operate. The kingdom of God always operates through the human being and through your words. So I trust that this has helped you. This is just the foundation of the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now that we will understand the power of the kingdom of God inside of me. 
Lord, that I will understand that wherever I go, whatever I do, I will either activate the kingdom in that area or restrict the kingdom of God in that area. Lord, I pray right now that we will get a revelation of this. And Lord, wherever we go, Lord, we will bring life, blessing, and destiny in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that each and every one at the sound of my voice will pick up their responsibility, pick up the ban, and go do what you've called us to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to bless you. I want to commend you. I want to tell you right now, this is such an exciting journey. And remember this, the kingdom of God dwells inside of each one of us. So God bless you. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you soon. Love you lots. Bye-bye.